Hello, I'm in the studio with Yanni Alomo from Dark Funeral, Night Crowned, and Despite. And today we're going to be recording drums for a playthrough for the Despite song Awakening. If you want a deep dive on how to tune your drums and what drum skins to use for extreme metal sessions like this one, be sure to find that down in the links below. If you're here to learn about microphone placement and recording techniques, then I'll shut my mouth and we'll get started. Your top priority when recording drums for high speed extreme metal genres is to minimize the bleed you get between microphones. Meaning that if you have a microphone on the rack tom, you're going to want to minimize the signal you get from all of the other instruments on your kit. The cymbals, the hi-hat, the snare, etc. So that you get as much of the rack tom as possible into that microphone without getting too much of anything else that bleeds into the very same mic. However, you also must consider that your microphones should emulate whatever they record in a pleasant and usable way. If you compromise the position of your microphones too much solely for the purpose of bleed, then they'll start to sound like garbage. Thirdly and lastly, you want to keep the microphones out of the way of your drummer. You don't want your drummer hitting the microphones. Whenever you set up a microphone on your drum kit, you have to balance between those three fundamental elements in order to place the microphone at its most optimal position. So whenever you set up a microphone, you have to ask yourself, number one, how much bleed do I get? Number two, how do I get the best sound and the most coherent phase? And number three, is this out of the way of my drummer? You can minimize some of these points by asking your drummer to tweak their kit. For example, raising their cymbals away from their rack toms in order to minimize the amount of cymbal bleed you get in your rack tom microphones. But there's only so much they can tweak before it starts affecting their playing. You can also try using a larger room, as a larger room will allow the sound from your drum kit to dissipate, giving you less bleed between your microphones. You can even record different parts of the kit separately, famously known as the Mutt Lang method, where you record the entire song playing just the cymbals, then again playing just the snare and toms, and then a third time playing just the kick. This is a very modern approach and allows you to optimize the placement of your microphones without worrying too much about the bleed. But it's often difficult and unrealistic when it comes to extreme metal genres, like tech death. Keeping all of that in mind, let's look at what we did for Yanni for this session. For the snare top mic, which gives us the attack and body of our snare, I used a Sankin CU31 microphone into a Focusrite Red 1 preamp. I placed the microphone using two finger widths above the snare rim, with the diaphragm just past the snare edge and a relatively flat angle aimed just outside the center of the snare. I aimed the mic away from the hi-hat, the first rack tom, and the left crash to minimize the bleed. For the snare bottom mic, which is used to add snare wire sizzle and add to the snare's thickness, I used the exact same microphone preamp and microphone placement as the top mic, I just mirrored it on the underside of the snare with the phase reversed. Cymbal bleed isn't too much of an issue here, but you have to be careful not to get too much bleed from the kick drum. Hello Freddy. Hello. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Why do you like this, the sunken mics more than the SM57? This sucks way better. Sounds way better. Yeah. For the hi-hat, I used a Shure KSM-141 into an API-3124. I placed it about 15 centimeters from the hi-hat, just to give it more articulation when being played. I then aimed the microphone as much as possible away from the left crash and the snare for better isolation. For the overheads, I used two KM-184s into an API-3124. I set them at about 50 centimeters from each crash cymbal, at the point where the cymbal moves the least. I like to place the left and right microphones relatively far away from each other to give us a wider stereo image, but here I had to work with a limited range to pick up our splashes in the middle of the kit and keep the snare relatively centered between the two microphones. When setting up the overheads, you can try experimenting with higher microphone placement, but keep in mind that the other instruments on the kit will start bleeding into the microphones the higher up you go. Typically when working with extreme metal, your drummer's dynamics will be all over the place. So when it comes to the final mix, you'll have more control over their playing if you rely more on the close microphones for your overall drum sound rather than your overhead mics. For the ride, I used a Calrec CM1050C into a Focusrite Octopre. Here I used a similar principle to my hi-hat mic. 
It's just there to give me some more articulation. So I aimed the mic to where the bow meets the bell and placed it about 15 centimeters away. You can choose to use the microphone above the ride, but you might get too much bleed from the other cymbals, in which case you may have to manually cut out the sections of the song where the ride isn't being played. I prefer placing the microphone under the ride and aiming it away from the floor tom and snare, then just flipping the phase. For the china, I used the same microphone, preamp, and principle as the hi-hat, but just a little bit further away, since the china moves a lot more than the hi-hat does and we don't want any wobbling sounds in our microphone. Just like with our overheads, I pointed this microphone where the china moves the least. I also aimed it away from the snare and right crash to minimize the bleed. For the toms, I used four SM98s into a Vintec 473. I used pretty much the same principle as the snare here, with about two finger widths from the rim of the tom and aimed just outside of the center. I also pointed the mics as much as possible away from any cymbals, any other toms, and of course, the snare. The snare is usually the loudest thing on your kit, and it'll bleed into everything. For the kick inside mic, which gives us the attack and punchiness of the kick, I used an SM91 into a Focusrite Red 1 preamp. I placed it about a third of the way into the kick, but in our case this mic isn't going to be used too much since the kick is stuffed to get the right playability for Yanni, so it sounds quite muffled. Generally bleed isn't too much of a problem since the microphone is inside the kick and placed quite far back. For the kick outside mic, which gives us the low end thud of the kick, I used an AKG D112 into a Focusrite Red 1 preamp. I have it one third of the way into the sound hole, aimed at where the beater meets the head of the kick, but slightly angled so that it's not totally parallel with my drum head to give me some extra low end. Bleed usually isn't an issue. For the kick trigger, Yanni brought his RT30K and I plugged it into the Focusrite Octobri. Pretty straightforward, just make sure it's tight against the batter head of the kick and not too loose so you don't get any misfiring. Then replace the sound with a sample that suits the style of music you're recording. For this session, we used Yanni's very own sample of choice. Lastly, the room microphones. I used two Royer 121s into a TubeTech MP1A. Room mics are used for all sorts of different reasons, but the idea in this session is to get a balanced image of the kit that will make our drum sound more vibey and cohesive. The Bloomline technique I used gives me minimal phase issues and a great 360 degree image of the room. If you place the room mics too high, you'll get a lot of cymbal noise. If you place them too low, they might be too boomy and you'll get a lot of snare wire sizzle. I usually get a nice, balanced sound for these mics by placing the point at which the Bloomline microphones meet at the middle of the snare. Also make sure to position the microphones so that they have a relatively similar amount of volume from the kit, or else your room mics will be too lopsided when you pan them out, although a little bit is okay. You can generally fix any unbalances in volume by rotating the microphones in place. You can go crazy and set up a ton of room mics, but they can also end up obscuring your drummer's playing and take away from the kit's separation and definition in the mix. So a good idea when recording extreme metal where separation is key is to find a couple spots in the room where the vibe of the drums sound great. Put the room mics there and then only use as many as you need to so that the drums sound defined and articulate but also vibey and cohesive. For Yanni's session, these two Royer microphones were all I needed. Before starting, make sure that your drummer is in the right mood and not too exhausted or nervous. Make sure that their playback is set up so that they can hear everything clearly, especially the click. Uh, when recording, I kind of want to hear myself and my drums in a, in a way that feels natural, that kind of resembles the room I'm in, but not that it sounds too big, you know? I just want to hear everything in detail, but it no doesn't necessarily have to be like super nice sounding, as long as it feels good. So I, I want to hear the click, but not too loud. If I have guitars, bass, mainly even vocals. You can also add gates, EQ, and compression 
that emulate what you will do later on in the mix. This way you'll be able to more accurately discern which performance is the best one to use. It's also a good idea to weigh down your cymbal stands with something heavy to keep them from moving. Then use tape to outline the feet of each stand and go into the live room periodically to make sure they haven't moved. Normally I'll do multiple different takes throughout the entire song and then cut in my favorite sections from each take. Then I might do some extra punch-ins to fix up some shaky fills and sections. In Yanni's case, he'll probably get it right without too much hassle within the first few takes, so I'm just gonna hit record and let Yanni show us how everything sounds. 